This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live on a Monday, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere, December 20th, wherever and however you are connected. Great to have you with us. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside a man who actually stayed dry during the BYU Independence Bowl, Jerem Jordan. It was dry in the green room here. Um... Uh, at Wife for Life, BYU needs to drop rain from their fight song lyrics. <laughs> you tweeted a picture of a bunch of uh, shirtless young men, uh, you know, out there in the rain, which was awesome. It's what they do when they're not in Provo because it's, it's okay. Do. Yeah, and I quoted that and said, uh, Meryl J. Bateman is not pleased. Well, of course, he was the president of BYU who, th- who said, hey, if you're an endowed member of the church, you shouldn't be shirtless at a football game. Right, uh, which was saying it's like, well, you got all these what we call premies, pre missionaries, <laughs> out there who maybe aren't, who knows? But uh, yeah, th- that's crazy, man. the The weather was insane, like delayed game, lightning, pre, all that stuff. I'm calling the women's basketball game, going. Jaron Hall's not starting, and they're delaying the game. What's going on? The sideways rain with the wind gusting, weird situation. BYU goes down fourteen nothing. Luckily, BYU back. figured it out and won. Yeah, how about that in the alternate universe? Yeah, get out of here. (laughs) Dang it. Unfortunately, we are not reporting that news today. (sighs) Here is your Monday show lineup as we open up Christmas week. How about the gift of ESPN's Trevor Maddich? He joins the show for a second time in four days. Was it a fumble? And was it that fumble that cost BYU the game? I wonder what we think of this. Strong opinions from <laughs> Trevor Maddich as well on the way. Tyler Algiers' post-game interview after his record-breaking season. Was it the final interview of Tyler's BYU playing career? <gasps> Plus, Taysom Hill on the Saints put Tom Brady in a place he's never been as a professional. Ever. How about that? On the ground? And another Mark Pope bounce back special. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Breaking, BYU lose to UAB in the Independence Bowl. Thought BYU was independent. 31-28 Saturday to finish the season. It stings, and I need to make sure that uh, this loss that we learned from it, that that's going to be the key. It, it sucks to lose, but uh, if we don't take advantage of the learning moments, then I think it, it, then, then this all for naught. So... Yeah. I'm committed to getting this team ready and making sure that the 22 season starts right now. Yes, it does. Tyler Algiers set the BYU single season rushing record. Amazing. Just incredible. Passing Luke Staley's 2001 Doak Walker Award winning season to finish with 1,606 yards and what, 23 rushing touchdowns? <laughs> incredible. Against seven wow. power five teams. Amazing. Incredible stuff for sure. BYU men's basketball routes Weber State on the road in Ogden. Yes, the actual Ogden at the D-Event Center. 89-71 on Saturday night. The Cougars now 9-2. And and Mark Pope, as head coach at BYU, still has not lost back-to-back games in the regular season. Amazing. Alex Barcelo led all scores with 23 points. He went bonkers in the second half, including this. Into the front court, Knight dribbles left to right, back to Barcelo. He'll take another three Don't and hits it. Open. <laughs> Alex Barcelo has hit his last three threes. Seneca Knight hit a bunch of threes in the first half as well. He had 14 points. Spencer Johnson added 13. The Cougars on their way to Hawaii for the Hawaiian Airlines Where? Diamond Head Classic, 22nd through the 25th. Hawaii. What? Number 20, women's hoops beats Washington State 71-53 Saturday to get to 9-1 thanks to 20 points from Paisley Harding, 15 points from Tegan Graham. The Cougars wrap up non-conference play tomorrow night at Montana State. It was a wild game. Uh, BYU won by 18, but it was down to three in the fourth quarter. BYU blew it off. Never had a doubt, man. Never had a doubt. It's the Pac-12 versus BYU, Jerem. 12-0-1. BYU versus the Pac-12. Amazing. How about Cougars in the NFL featuring Kyle Van Noy, who had six tackles in a Saturday night loss to the Indianapolis Colts. Zach Wilson 
through 13 for 23 for 170 yards and a loss to Miami. Fred Warner, nine tackles and a fumble recovery in a San Francisco win against Atlanta. And Taysom Hill in a strange Way to Sunday bury night the, game. Bury the lead well, here. Of course we're going to bury it. We want people to stay with us the whole time. If they Taysom can't stay Hill, five minutes in, we got problem. 13 for 27, passing 154 yards, 11 rushes, 33 yards in a nine to nothing win against Tom Brady and his Tampa Bay Buccaneers. How about this? Tom Brady has never in his professional career been shut out at home and hasn't been shut out since all the way back in 2006 when Nick Saban was the head coach of the Miami Dolphins and they did it to Tom Brady. That's how bad it was. Uh, this just in from the men's basketball AP Top 25. BYU is six, seven, eight, nine out. Nine out. Yeah. Eight out, nine out? Yeah. Nine out. All right. So, super fun. Third-team All-American volleyball player Kenzie Kerber signs to play professionally in Puerto Rico for Crio Criollas de Caguas, mm -hmm. which is Spanish for the Nino, who won the LVSF of Puerto Rico championship last year. So congrats to Kenzie. She's going to keep balling. We've got a lot of research to do there to figure out what the LVSF is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's going to be that difficult. A simple Google. Cougars overseas in the basketball. Jake Tolson, 16 points and a four rebound performance in the BC Gittingen win. And Elijah Bryant had 13 points and seven rebounds for his team in a win. Congratulations. BYU swimmers Josue Dominguez and Tony Puertas competed in the FINA World Swimming Championship in Abu Dhabi. How was your uh, How was your December, uh, guys? Oh, we went to Abu Dhabi. Good. Dominguez swam a 58-44 in the breaststroke, beating his own national record for the Dominican uh, Republic. Then Puertas repped Peru in the 100 backstroke, had a time of 52-98. Congratulations. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What happened in Shreveport? BYU and UAB in the Independence Bowl, 31-28 stunner by the Fighting Trogdors, otherwise known as the Blazers, they over BYU. Burninated the Cougars. They did. They burninated BYU's hopes of an 11-win season and any shot at a top-10 finish. Yeah, a lot of frustration. Yeah. So, Jerem, we look back at it. What happened in Shreveport? What happened? Uh, BYU's defense was on skates a lot, and that was tough. Obviously, the conditions weren't ideal, but both teams played in that. Uh, two great rushing games from Dwayne uh, McBride, McBride and Tyler Algier, of course. Um, going up 14 nothing, not awesome, right? Of course, I mean, it's going to sound like sour grapes, but let's just talk about it. A lot of injuries. BYU still should have won the game, okay? Period. BYU should have won the game in spite of all the injuries, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Of course, Jaron Hall not playing is a huge thing, but we thought Baylor Romney, a.k.a. G5 Killa, would be just fine. But BYU really relied on Tyler Algier. 27 carries, 192, three touchdowns. He was spectacular. That should be enough to win. So certainly this play is is a controversial one. Samson Nakua does not catch the ball here. They ruled a catch and a fumble, and UAB takes over. If he can't, if that's incomplete, BYU is still going to be, you know, at, at midfield, still marching, and probably have a good chance to go down and at least tie the game with a field goal, maybe win it, right? So that's disappointing. This this was disappointing. Um, you know, BYU didn't play well enough to win and, and lost this game. I'll make uh, you know I'll make my my bigger point in topic two coming up about the season as a whole. But yeah, I, I said last week I didn't think there was any way BYU was going to lose this game, but uh, I was absolutely wrong. BYU did. The Cougars struggle through a three point loss, ten and three. What's wild, Jerem, is our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. BYU, as you pointed out over the weekend, mm -hmm. lost one more game to group of five teams than they did to power five teams. Uh-oh. Six and one against the power fives. Three and two against the G5s because of the setback against UAB. That is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. I hate it so much. <laughs> it's one of the stranger things that we have ever encountered. How do you go in the eight years that we have been doing this? Show. How do you go six and one versus all the P fives <laughs> and three? Listen, because yeah, of what you yeah. talked about, and you're yeah. right. It does sound like sour grapes. Oh, you cry about it. It wasn't the, was the FOMO. We were hurt. Right? Like, what well, 
It is sour grapes. And a lot of people are saying, well, it shouldn't have come to that situation where the fumble would have determined the game like that. It happens. It happens. BYU going down 14 to nothing in the game in those conditions, I think is an underrated aspect of the game. Like, you have to battle back. Like, the wake-up call happens. They battle back. BYU's 28-17 after that. They take a lead. But then there's the breakdown on the go-ahead touchdown by UAB. Yep. On... What multiple touchdowns from UAB. We're not sure if it was busted coverage or just a misunderstanding on assignments, but UAB scores a touchdown. They find a spot in the end zone and take the lead 31-28. But did anybody think the way that BYU was driving the ball before the Samson Nakua fumble that the Cougars were not going to go down the field and score? He was going to go down. They're going to go down and score. Yeah. They handed it out to Tyler Algier. You'd like to think. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I hate that all of the emphasis is being put on ah, the fumble. It wasn't a fumble. That's a terrible call. And why don't they re- actually review that? And <laughs> and he- here's call. the other aspect but of that. It, but that one, I don't believe you lose on one play. I believe you lose on a series Multiple of plays. plays. Yes. Sure. Sh- certainly that's the one that sticks out. I asked Kalani Satake after the game, what did the officials say to you yeah. about the review of the play? And he said, they said, they said to me, Kalani, if you throw the challenge flag, you're wasting the time out and you're wasting your time. Like, we're not going to overturn the call. I still want a lawyer. So. You know what I mean? Like, the other thing to consider is, okay, well, then at that point, because if you challenge and you don't get it, you lose a timeout. There's three and a half minutes left Worth in the game. the risk, though. But then you only have two timeouts left to try and stop the ball that UAB now controls. They never did. Running the game. And yeah. uh, they had all so, three timeouts. Timeouts still weren't, the, weren't the issue. Yeah. BYU's inability to, uh, you know, stop the run game of, of UAB. Yeah, it's it's a bummer, you know. Okay, topic two. This is our question of the day. Are you more focused on the bowl loss or have you zoomed out to focus on the season? <laughs> right now I am zoomed in on the loss. Yesterday I felt like I mentally had kind of taken a step back and I was looking at the entire season. But by necessity of discussing on this show, Mm -hmm. (laughs) we have zoomed back in, and it is frustrating, and it it really stings. And I had to honestly stay away from social media because (laughs) of the fallout that was happening after that game. Yeah, I just jumped on all my burner accounts and just went to town. (laughs) I jumped on Cougar Board, and then I felt better, said no one. I, I don't want this game to take away from what was Overall, an incredible football season. And I tweeted out after the game. I changed my analogy that I brought up last week. And it always deals with food because food is amazing. But if this were a steak dinner this entire season, the appetizers and the salad were incredible, Jerem. Awesome. Best appetizer you've ever had. Steak and onion. Steak was really good, other than a weird fatty bite or two in the middle. Okay, it was okay. It was some trout. There was some chewy, rubbery pieces of the steak in the middle. Okay, and the dessert just stunk. The dessert was was a letdown. It was super disappointing. I'm wondering why BYU decided to intermittently fast during the bowl game. <laughs> it, but when you have a good meal, even if the dessert is not great, it's yeah, it leaves you with a quite literally bad taste in your mouth. But overall, the meal is really good. It's first, a good meal with a bad dessert. First world problem here. Right? Okay, so I here's where I zoomed out to. <clears throat> BYU is going to have three to six losses on a given schedule probably, right? So you pick which losses you get. Why do we have to have losses at all, says Twitter to me. Because you're not Alabama, and even then uh, Alabama lost to Texas A&M, right? You have to have losses. So, Spencer, tell me which losses before the season you would have picked. Because – I don't want to give up the Utah loss. I don't want to get, uh, win. I don't want to give up the Arizona State win. I don't give, want to give up the Utah State win. I don't want to give up like all the, the Virginia power, win over Bronco Mendenhall. All the Power Five wins. So tell me what you'd give up. I Boise State at the time I argued that's a tolerable loss. That's fine. We shouldn't. Look. Then tell me who you'd rather lose to. Like this team was really good. BYU was going to lose a couple games. You know, we hoped it was only two. It ended up being three. Tell me the losses you would rather have. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you don't want to end on a loss. I get it. And I'm not saying don't be disappointed. I'm just saying, like, in a couple months, I don't think we're going to care as much as we do right now, of course. We'll, we'll simmer down. We're in fight or flight ah! with this bowl game.
But yeah, tell me the losses you'd rather have. Like, would you have rather um, lost Arizona State and not won that game, but beat UAB? I wouldn't. I like that win a lot. No, because that ruins the And then you got the into the top 10. That ruins the de facto Pac-12 South Championship. So give me the loss you'd trade for it. Well, it's not going to be against any of the Pac-12 teams. It would have to be Virginia. It would have to have been Virginia. Well, then Bronco Mendenhall probably stays at Virginia because that, like, terrorized their season, and all of a sudden now he's praying in a different way maybe. I don't know. You know what I mean? Who knows? I don't know. Like, I, I yeah. it, it's tough for me to say, like, oh, I don't want – it was – the season was awesome. It was, it was awesome. It was incredible. Yeah. But it's amazing. Yeah, if you were like, hey – would you rather close out the season with the win for the seniors and lose to Virginia or keep it the way it is and lose to UAB? That's probably the only situation I would take is uh, I'd probably take a loss to Virginia if it meant that BYU went out with a win in the Independence Bowl and the guys could be happy at the end and BYU wouldn't have to struggle through losing to the Blazers. Uh, that's that's the only one though. Washington State. I wouldn't know. No, no, no. Pac-12. That, do you no, see none my, of the Pac-12 Do you teams. see my point? Like, let, let's be honest. BYU was good. BYU wasn't thirteen and 0, 12 and one good. You know what I mean? Like when they were healthy, schedule, maybe. But it is what it is. Like playing all those teams, you will get banged up. It it just is what it is, right? You play Power Five schedules, you're going to get hurt at a different level than if you play G fives. Like I can't quantify it with the stat. But I know it's true based on what we've seen in certain years where you're always loading them up. It, this isn't the same kind of injury-riddled team that it was in the Mountain West. It's very, it's different. Um, so, yeah, it's a bummer to finish the season like that, in no doubt. But I am ecstatic over the overachievement that was this season. It was so fun. This season was great. Right now, it kind of stinks to end on that note. I get it. I get it for all the reasons we talked about. But when the dust settles, we're going to think about this season for a long time. The Ending the streak against Utah. Tyler Algier plays an the all-time play. The Big 12 play. invitation. I was getting to that, yes. The Big 12, beating all the Power 5 teams, hanging that banner. Uh, it was awesome, man. Yes. And if the cost was like, if the co- like if the cost was a Boise State loss and a UAB Bowl loss, it was worth it. It was worth it. Well, let's zoom way out, shall we, Jerem? Let, I mean, let's let's now make a... What is the point of life? Let's make a unified oh, we're stand. Not, oh, we're not going there. And zoom way out. Hit it! Two fifty-eight until BYU football takes on the Bulls of USF to open the 2022 season. 258 it's, it's days away on the countdown to the Bulls. Is that zooming out enough for you? No. Let's count down to the Big 12. Let's go. <laughs> Countdown to the Big 12. 622-ish. That's We think the game's on September 2nd yeah, of right. 2023 against know. Tennessee at home. It but could, could be moved to Thursday or Friday. Like, uh, week four, <laughs> we don't know. Uh, 622-ish to the Big 12. <laughs> <laughs> now, if we do that every stinking day, now that's something. Oh, boy. Count down to the Big 12. Should we do that? No. Every day? No. <laughs> Oh. I kind of love the idea of that because that's insane. 622-ish okay. days <laughs> every day. Oh, <laughs> Listen, there are parents counting down the days of their missionaries that are probably close to that. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? That just, that just, start, that that just, just started. Out, like three months just ago. Just started their mission <laughs> trips. <laughs> when do they come home? Two weeks? No, no, no. Two years. 618 months. 22 days away. Hey, The Athletic tweeted this out. Did you know this? The 1980 Holiday Bowl featured BYU scoring 21 points in the final 233 against SMU. What? I had no, I had no idea. The Miracle Bowl? That's an... The, mir- the Miracle Bowl? What does bowl? SMU call the bowl game? We call it the Miracle Bowl? What are the, they're like the, the crappy bowl. The meltdown? <laughs> yeah, what do they call it? <laughs> <laughs> they're like the I hate BYU bowl. Oh... <laughs> <laughs> Well, SMU had worse days ahead. <laughs> but they really enjoyed it, though. Like, the cost was worth it, right? I don't know. Was it? Their program went away. <laughs> but they're back, Spence. Our question of the day. Are you more focused on the Independence Bowl loss for BYU? Or have you zoomed out to focus on the entirety of the 2021 season? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation. 
on BYU Sports Nation. At Cougar Stats on Twitter says, no one in their right mind would have turned down a 10-3 and season this year. A disappointing bowl loss doesn't magically transform it into a 3-10 and nightmare. True, which is physically impossible. Hashtag BYUSN, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Speaking of the it's Miracle true. Bowl, uh, my 10-year-old son, Jax, we've been talking about he's reading the, the greatest BYU quarterbacks book. Yes. He, re- he, was, he was excited to talk to me about the Miracle Bowl last night. Yeah. He, he just read about it. I'm, it That's great. It's, it's very uh, gratifying for me to see him discover how incredible that was for the first time. Just wait until he gets to the Book of Mormon. This will be exciting. <laughs> Coming up. He's been there. And done taste him and Zach. Done good. <laughs> And ESPN's Trevor Maddich on what this 2021 BYU football season should be remembered for. Was it a fumble? This is BYU Sports Nation. We said the sour grapes so hard. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Samri. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing. Excellent. Cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points. Gift card. Concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. The time is 1,500 hours. Again with a pair of aces? I don't know how you keep beating me. I'm fully supportive of your father's decision. This family needs time out. We said peace and quiet. You don't get quieter than this. Oh, you mean it's haunted? I shall become their living nightmare. We aren't Ghostbusters. I have a plan. It's nice to meet you. I am cussed. This place is starting to feel like home. How do you plead? For mercy. For love is always <laughs> with you. And love is stronger than death. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Listen to BYU Sports Nation on demand by downloading the podcast. You can just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast or like this fella, look it up on your phone where podcasts are found. He's using Spotify in this case. You can use podcast, Stitcher, SoundCloud, all, all that. You can find the show. Subscribe, rate, and review. User-friendly. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Trevor Maddich of ESPN, college football insider and analyst, joins us on BYUSN for the second time in four days. I'm calling it an early Christmas present, Trevor. Happy holidays. How should BYU fans appropriately cope with what was a really frustrating loss to UAB in the holiday season? Well, emotionally, it's real. It, it's a real negative emotion, and that's okay. I think once that emotion subsides, though, it shouldn't cloud what the Cougars were able to accomplish this year. I mean, we know about going 6-1 and one against the Power 5, 5-0 five and oh against the Pac-12. What happened in the bowl doesn't take any of that away. But you can also look at, at how BYU had to deal with injuries down the stretch, losing some of their best players, especially on defense, not just down the stretch. I mean, Keenan Peely and Keenan Ellis were out in September, and then from October, early November, you're talking about Peyton Wilgar, Chaz Ayu, some of the best players on this entire football team, all playing on defense, all not available for the stretch run in November. And yet they were still able to have a strong finish. They still were able to beat USC at the end, and they were still able to go and, and put up a fight in this bowl game. I think this is one of the best performances I've seen from a standpoint of who they had available and one of the best coaching jobs I've seen from what they did with the guys that they had available in terms of these BYU coaches that 
that I think has happened in a long, long time. And so I'm not trying to be Pollyanna here. What I am saying is that the emotion is real, but that emotion should not diminish what this team accomplished and how it accomplished those things without some of their best players. It was certainly frustrating to lose the bowl game to UAB, a team that BYU felt like it should beat. If it's number 13, you mentioned the injuries. Let's talk about kind of some of the moments in the game that stuck out. Tyler Algier was amazing. Let's just start there, and then we'll go to those. 192 yards rushing, uh, you know, three touchdowns, the greatest single season of rushing in BYU history uh, by yards and just straight up against that schedule. It was incredible. He sets the single season record passing Luke Staley's 2001. I never thought... I'd see that beaten, let alone this year. What he did this year was nothing sort of incredible uh, from Tyler Algier. Yeah, against that schedule with injuries also on the offensive line at times. You're right. And with all the things that you said about Tyler Algier's performance, his greatest play wasn't even a run by him. His greatest play was against Arizona State when he chased down that defender who was on a, on a scoop and score. And he was on the way to the end zone, and Tyler jumped on his back wound up with his right hand and punched the ball out and BYU recovered it. I mean, that was his greatest play and it didn't even have anything to do with him carrying the football. So you talk about him being the greatest running back of all time at BYU. You can make a case. He's the greatest football player of all time at BYU what? because of being a walk on then a linebacker. Then what he did as a running back, you put that together and he has to be considered in that conversation. Oh, considered in the conversation, sure. I thought you were saying he's better than Ty or Steve or Jim right now. I was like, whoa! But I, I see what you're well, saying. Those guys, were all, those guys were all great players. They were all quarterbacks. I think you also need to consider the versatility of Tyler Algier and all the things he did and all the ways that he did it. And you're right, in the conversation is what I'm talking about. Yeah, he's the greatest walk-on turned running back, linebacker, running back in BYU history, undoubtedly. No one's questioning that one, right? <laughs> Uh, I hope not. If we want to get that specific, we need the caliper now in order to, to be able to get this stuff arranged. Trevor Maddich of ESPN with us on BYU Sports Nation. We're discussing Tyler Algier at the moment. Based on his last game performance, Trevor, and certainly NFL eyes watching him, was that the proper send-off for Tyler in terms of maximizing his potential draft stock? For him, yes. I mean, the, the loss doesn't affect what scouts will think about his performance. So keep this in mind, too, that UAB's defense was the top defense in Conference USA. So he did it against a very stout bunch of defenders. And I think that when you're a scout looking at Tyler Algier, what you're seeing is a complete player, just a complete player. We know how he runs. He's got breakaway speed at the college level, which will turn into very good speed at the NFL level. He can catch. He can block. He did some good blocking for uh, for Romney in past plays in this game against UAB. And so those things are what they're looking for in a back, a back that they can use on all three downs instead of just first or second down or instead of just third down. And you can't trust them for the others. He can do all of those things. Now, I think that if he goes today, not today, but if he, if he goes now into the NFL after this season, he'll be ready for it. He'll absolutely be ready for it. I would give him this bit of counsel don't try to run over people as often as he does in college, especially in the front seven, because that'll, that'll wear him down pretty quickly. You know, he's got to know when his journey's over and he's got to make some moves when in college he would run over people. Still, he's got the ability to do both. And if he does decide to go, all BYU fans can be as appreciative of what he's done here. Absolutely. But come back for another year, Tyler, please. We need you against Notre Dame. Uh, let's talk about some of the plays in the bowl game that stuck out that uh, didn't go BYU's way. Certainly an early kind of fourth and seven. BYU throws for like three yards uh, on that one. A, a quick out, I guess, was the check down there. Uh, going down 14 nothing didn't help. There was a fourth and one where you don't hand off to Tyler Algier. And then the Samson Nakua uh, catch and fumble didn't seem like it was a catch at all. Which of those plays and situations kind of stuck out as bigger determining factors in the loss? Well, let's talk about two of them. I, I think that fourth down where they handed off to Mason Wake, I was fine with that. If he would have gained that that yard and gotten first down there, everybody would have said what a brilliant move it was because the entire defense thought that Tyler Algier was going to get the ball and they did a quick handoff to the fullback, and and he's a powerful runner too. Well, it didn't work out. But I still think the the logic behind making that play call to begin with was fine. It's just the play didn't work out. Then that fumble that wasn't a fumble, I agree with you. 
that you've got to catch the ball and control it, get a foot down, then make a move common to the game in order for it to be a catch. I think that Samson had that ball in his hands briefly, but then he took his hand, his head away from the catch and started to look downfield, and he immediately muffed that ball, immediately. And so it wasn't like he caught it, ran a step, and then muffed it. He caught it, and then it started to come out. And there are different angles that show, especially the angle from in front that shows that. So I think that the replay officials just let it stand because they thought there was enough of a question that they would just let it stand. They didn't say it was confirmed, but this really came down to what the call on the field was because if they called that an incomplete pass, it would have stayed an incomplete pass. Trevor, I asked Kalani Satake after the game what the officials told him, and he made it clear that they said, look, you're going to waste your challenge if you – Use it right now. It's just going to be a waste of time. We're not going to overturn that call. In the circumstances, and now that we have hindsight, would you have still thrown the challenge flag just to take another look at it? No. No, because every play in college is reviewed, every single play. And so if there's a if there's a handoff that goes for four yards and the ball doesn't come out, technically that's reviewed. If the ball does come out, that's also reviewed. And if the officials can tell that the ball carrier was down before it came out, then they won't disrupt the flow of the game. But if they're not sure and they want more time, that's when they signal down to the referee and the referee blows the whistle and then they take more time to review. And so the question is, how much time did they think they needed to review it? They came to their conclusion that it was a fumble, or at least they couldn't tell the difference, let's put it that way, which means the call stands on the field, in the time that they had to make that review. And throwing the flag at that point probably would have been a waste because I thought the the replay officials had plenty of time to make their determination. I disagree with their determination, but you've also got to realize this from a standpoint of the flow of the way fumbles are called on the field. If an official on the field sees what looks like a fumble, that ball comes out, everybody's scrambling for it. What they will tend to do if they're not sure is let the play continue and then let replay sort it out later. The reason for that is that if it turns out to be a fumble and they blew the ball dead because they thought it was not a fumble, then the defense might pick that thing up and score a touchdown. And that is not allowed. And that would be a travesty. And so they'll let that happen and let the, let the replay official come back and say, yeah, looks like the defense had a scoop and score, but actually the ball carrier was down or didn't control the ball if he was a receiver. And that's one of the reasons that there is a bias towards calling it as a fumble on the field if the on-field official is not certain and letting the replay officials sort it out. And in this case, the replay officials, in the time that they had, and they, they had plenty of time to do it, I thought, couldn't overturn it. And that's why it remained the call that it was. And so it's unfortunate that that's the way it works, but that is the way it works. Yeah, and and it stinks because uh, you don't want to use the timeout to challenge uh, because you want to save those thinking you're going to get a stop and get the ball back, but you also want to challenge in the right call on the field. So that was a bummer. All right, so BYU loses the game. It's extremely disappointing. No one's arguing that. Uh, But when the season ends up 10-3 and and it's just this massive, awesome uh, year, probably an overachievement, given the way BYU was expected to be, given the way that BYU had a tougher schedule, da, da, da. It was an incredible year. So uh, our question of the day has been, are you still focused on the game or have you zoomed out to the season? I think we've all kind of zoomed out to the season, besides the challenge flag play, uh, because it was a good year and it should be celebrated in spite of the bowl offs. Yes, although right now I think it's it's fair to keep zoomed in on that game <laughs> rather than zoom out to the season because there are a bunch of, we talked about a couple of them, you know, the, the game winning touchdown, the go ahead touchdown that turned out to be the game winner for UAB. That was another one where it was either a busted coverage yeah. or it was incorrect technique by one of the defensive backs. One of the two, there was an, uh, another touchdown that was definitely a busted coverage, things like that. And even when you've got backups in for injured starters, you still need to play the right way. If you look at what, what the opportunities were one play, going the other way could have turned that game around. And as ugly as it feels, it still was quite a fight against a good team. I mean, coming into this game, UAB's top receiver was averaging 27 yards per catch. Their tight end was number two, averaging 20 yards per catch. Their top running back that we sure got a a good look at was averaging about seven yards per carry. I mean, and the best defense in conference USA and BYU came in shorthanded and and wasn't able to, to make a couple of plays, but it was a couple of mental mistakes that I think that the team will focus on 
that are correctable that they can get better at next year. You look at Boise. Now we zoom back out. We zoom and look at the, the goodness of the season, but let's also look at the one big missed opportunity, which was Boise where three fumbles that were uncharacteristic of BYU guys really trying to do too much, not being lackadaisical, but trying to do too much. Those fumbles basically were the main contributors to losing to Boise state. So we can look at those things from a negative standpoint. All those things I just mentioned are correctable. Now we look at the season as a whole, even with those things, even with all the injuries, they were five and zero oh against the PAC 12, right? They were six and one against the power five. And these are things that BYU had never done before, and, and very few seasons could they have done it. And so I think you've got to put all that together once this emotion fades and see this for what it is. Because as a player, it really annoys me when a, 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 a tight game against a rival, for example, comes down to, or a championship game, comes down to one play and the other side made it, and you lose. And everybody says what a loser you are. You lost. You can't win. Well, wait a minute. You know, there were 150 plays in that game, maybe 200 plays in that game. And we won our share of those plays. Those didn't go away because one play went the other way at a key moment. And so as, as you look at this team, it's important to look at them from that standpoint. They achieved tremendous success in so many ways in this season. Didn't end the way they wanted it to end. But at the same time, that doesn't erase all the great things that they did. I say this not as a guy that played football at BYU. You guys have known. I've been, I've been, you know, critical when I need to be. I've been as fair as I as I can be as I talk about these things. Because if I'm not fair, then people wouldn't believe what I'm saying. So I'm now being fair to those players and those coaches who I think, even though this ended badly, those guys did a phenomenal job this year. Ten wins in 2021. Who knows what's to come in 2022? Whoa! In the final year of independence. Trevor, great stuff. Happy holidays and a Merry Christmas to you, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, guys. ESPN's Trevor Maddich on BYU Sports Nation. And I love that after the game, uh, some of the players in Kalani Satake all talked about, hey, who could have impacted this game? Who could have changed the game? And Kalani said, who feels like they could have made a play that would have changed the game. And everybody that played in the game raised their hand like, I could have done a better job. And I thought that was really well played because so much of the emphasis was placed on the fumble and Samson Nakua. And well, it wasn't a fumble. It wasn't a fumble. It wasn't a fumble. <laughs> I, I, I really wish that Cash Peterman was like, yes, I did not. Oh, wait, I didn't. Granted, he didn't play. <laughs> yeah. Everybody that like, played actually played in the game. That's like in Sunday school, like, who's a convert? And you're like. Are you doing the thing where, like, everyone's a convert? Are you doing, the, like, yeah. the actually weren't baptized when you were a kid thing? Trick, trick question. They're like, oh, when you were you baptized? Oh, eight. Oh, my bad. Coming up, Tyler Algier cemented his place in the BYU record book. Hear what he told that guy after the game. And, oh, boy, the anti-Navy crowd grows louder. <laughs> Who's anti-Navy? I love Ken Niamatawa. Should BYU ever wear Navy again? <laughs> this is BYU Sports Navy. Get out of here. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics.
I watch uh, BYG TV because it has good programming uh, for all family members, aligns to my values. BYU TV really does help me with my parenting. It helps me show my kids good examples of the way that we should live. No matter what you watch or listen, you always live uh, feeling better. All of us together. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marist, enabling global trade for a growing world. On the latest BYU Sports Nation right now, Kiki is just as sad about the football loss as you are, Kiki Nation. But the end of the season means it's time to look back on the top plays of the year. Check it out on BYU's on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and He is Jeremiah I'm Spencer. This is a Monday edition of BYU Sports Nation. To get content throughout today, follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Around presented by Visible's Correction. Presented by Marist. They bought Visible Supply Chain. Your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. Was Taysom Hill beating Tom Brady in the Bucks the greatest moment for a BYU quarterback in the NFL since Steve Young? No, because it was an <laughs> ugly, weird game. It was cool that Taysom Hill was a starting quarterback on the opposing side and they won the game. <laughs> but no. I still think the greatest moment for a BYU quarterback in the NFL is Zach Wilson being drafted number two overall. I was going to say that. It's No, it's Zach being drafted right? number two. That was hard. That, that's but, pretty incredible. Yes, pretty cool that he's the opposing quarterback. The Saints defense beat Tom Brady. But, you know, Taysom had a nice game. And, uh, oh, by the way, Zach Wilson had a nice day and a loss to the Dolphins. Progress. BYU quarterbacks doing their thing. That's pretty cool. Jerem, here we go again. BYU football wearing the Navy uniforms, the Midnight Virgil. They lose to UAB. Yeah. And BYU Uniform Tracker sent out the BYU final statistics. BYU Uniform Tracker. Final statistics for BYU's records in every uniform combination they had. Bordeaux and Royal, I told you, man. Broken down by helmets, jerseys, and pants. What about uh, cufflinks? Next level. It hasn't been good this season. 5-0 in oh white helmets. Hasn't been good this season wearing navy, Jerem. So Ugh. should BYU ever wear navy again? No. Nah. Yes. Yes, of course. This is I'm not, I, I don't believe, I don't live my life thinking what clothes I wear determines the outcome of sporting events. Good grief. Hey, you need to stay up. St I'm not a super big superstition. I know yeah, superstition yeah, yeah. is a real thing for a lot of people. Sure, sure. But what about the years that BYU dominated when they only wore Navy in the Bronco Mendenhall era? That was then. This is now. Well, I don't. Come on. Like, it's not just one season. Like, we, I've said this a million times before. It used to be the curse of the white uniforms. The, well, the white uniforms were awesome this year. So make up your minds. Yeah. No, there's no, there, there's nothing there. It's for Billy Nixon. Yes. Doctor. You, are, you should wear Navy. I, I support the Navy. Get Like, move past this. It used to be the white uniforms. Come on. BYU Women's Hoops moves to 9-1 and one with the win over Washington State. Wazoo finished the game 3 of 29 from 2. It was crazy. <laughs> Have you ever seen or heard of anything like that? No. 3 of 29 from two-point range. I have never seen that. And I've Not called, like I've Jackson's called a Little lot League of games. basketball games. <laughs> Sorry, in a Division One college basketball oh, right, game. Right, right, right. Have never seen anything like that. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, I've seen some disparities from the three-point line to the two-point line, but not like that. That's wild. Also, uh, points in the paint, 40 to 2. Haven't seen that either. That'll, that'll do, Pig. That'll do. Oh, what a good move. Good. Okay, coming up, the final results of our football prop picks. I wonder what happened. And my post-game interview following the BYU loss to UAB with star running back Tyler Algier. Was it the last interview he'll have done in a BYU uniform? This is BYU Sports Nation. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today.
If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. In a competition to win it all, they'll put everything on the line. Nature can be challenging. Elements can be harsh. Tensions can run deep. And sometimes it may seem hopeless. But giving up is never an option. And if they band together as a family, they will always stand a chance. Wow! Because real victory isn't just about surviving together. It's about living together. Watch Survivalists on BYU TV or the free BYU TV app. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. On the newest Steve Blue podcast, to talk with former BYU football player, now Pastor Derwin Gray, about his Cougar playing days, intercepting Steve Young and tackling Barry Sanders, and how he came to know God. Listen to it on the BYU Radio app and where podcasts are found. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B. I had a very distinct and visceral moment in the Independence Bowl in Shreveport. You've waited 46 minutes and 28 seconds to tell us this. When Tyler Algier walked out of the tunnel after the game, and I thought, oh my goodness, is this the last time I'm ever going to see Tyler Algier in a BYU uniform? Is this the last interview that he will do in a BYU uniform? Well, he could always come in studio if he declares in a BYU uniform. He could do that. But I see what you're saying, yes. Well, needless to say, I spoke with the ever-humble star running back after a record-breaking season. We talked about his future and a bunch of other stuff. Here's that conversation. Tyler, an incredible individual performance for you. We appreciate you coming out here in the cold and the wind after uh, a tough battle. Um, how would you sum up the overall performance, at least on the offensive side today? Yeah, you know, I think I think we did really good. We did really good, yeah. We had some flaws. I think I saw, like, we had, like, 9 of 14 in third down. So, you know, we, we played really efficient. It was just unfortunate events that kind of kind of messed us up. And I, we all had we all had mistakes. I even had a mistake, I believe. So, you know, it's just, but you know, we, we live for it. We live for this, you know. We live for the game. We live for we live for the moment. We just we just came short. So, but we did good. You set the individual record for most rushing yards in a single season at BYU. You passed the great Luke Staley. What does that mark mean to you, albeit in a game that you were wishing you would have won? Yeah, you know, Luke's a good friend of mine, but it's it's good. You know, it's an honor. You know, it's an honor, you know, just running. It's off. That's not just my record. I think it's just it's the whole offensive record. You know, I, I wouldn't have done it without the receivers blocking downfield and the big boys handling the trenches. So, you know, that's the offensive record right there. How would you sum up the season overall? Ten wins, three losses. It's good. You know, it's it's a good start. It's a good start. You know, everyone was doubting us at the beginning of the se- or at the beginning of the season, from especially from last year, saying, "Oh, you don't, you don't, you haven't played a team, yada yada yada." But you know, we we really stepped it up. We we stepped it up. We took that we took that to heart, and you know, we you know we did we did what we did, and we just came short on a couple of games. Could have been better, but you know that's football. We live for it. Like I said, we live for it. What do you say to a guy like Samson Nakua, who has been such an instrumental part of uh, the leadership and, and making big plays this season? I know he's disappointed, but what's the message to Samson after a tough fumble like that? We don't, we don't have the season we have without him. Without him, a lot of our, especially a lot of other guys like Neil Paul, but you know, we like I, we don't, we don't do it without him. You know, it's just unfortunate, unfortunate events that happen. But like I said, we li- we literally live for it. But he's part of our family. We could be glad, glad we have him at BYU. You know, Cougar Nation loves him, so he has support from us, the boys, his family, and just all Cougar Nation behind his back. So you know, he might have he might have had that mistake, but you know, he just at least he knows that we all love him. How would you explain the feeling in the locker room right now that you just walked out of? Yeah, you know, we're all. You know, we just we lost. You know, it's it's always tough losing, especially a game that we like we had we had in our grasp, we had in our grasp. But you know, you live and you learn. You know, it's a it's a lot of adversity that we can come. So next season, next season, there's a lot of we can either take that in, take that in, or end up perishing. I guess. Speaking of next season, you've got a lot to think about. 
and now that your season is over and the conversation now becomes after this incredible season do you go pro do you come back for one more year where do you stand in that uh, decision and conversation hey, you know we'll see we'll just see what happens just see what happens hopefully make a decision soon but you know just a lot of praying a lot of praying talking to family and coaches and all that so see what happens when do you expect to make that decision I'll keep you guys guessing. <laughs> Tyler, you're a good man. Uh, again, these interviews are always tough to come uh, and do after a loss, but we appreciate you. We congratulate you on an unbelievable 2021 season, and uh, thank you for repping the Y. Nah, I appreciate you guys. Love you, Cougar Nation. Tyler Algier, one of the best to ever do it for BYU football. No, he's, he's amazing. I really hope he comes back. If it's in his best interest to leave, great. Uh, Cougar Nation's best interest is that Tyler is back at BYU, so we'll see. We'll see what he does. Of course, we're going to root for him so hard, no matter what happens. Um, but he was the key to BYU winning ten games. If Tyler Algier is not the best running back in a single season BYU's ever had, I don't think BYU wins ten games. They needed him to beat Washington State. They needed him to beat you know Arizona State with the punch out, like all these amazing plays. Which the crazy part is that. And Trevor mentioned it, you know, and others have. John Boy broke it down on Twitter. It was great. Is th- his greatest play as a Cougar is not a rush. No, when we say Tyler Algier 10 years from now, like, hey, what's the one play you remember from Tyler Algier? Like, you have to pick one play. It was a everybody, one-yard rush versus South Florida. Everybody will no. talk about the KL punch of the football. It was so freaking <laughs> awesome, right? <laughs> Hopefully it comes back. We'll see. Incredible. Now, and, and, and in the next couple of weeks, we got to keep an eye on other guys for sure. making that decision. Gunnar Romney. Neil Pau, uh, you know, James Empey, you know, all these guys. So there are mixed – because people in that interview right after it happened are saying, well, he's talking about it. He's talking about next season. Like, I, th- I think he's going to come back. I th- I th- he's talking about he's going to come back. But then there are others in the Algier camp that are like, hey, we're going to miss you guys. You know, and it's like <laughs> – You're like, what does that mean? What does it mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, coming up, random yelling plus rise and shout-out to taking time for the fans. Finally. It had to be during a football loss in the bowl game, but I had a good weekend in my picks. Yeah, I put a stamp on that one. This is BYU Sports Nation. Mailing it in. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV, to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Hey, family. If you're looking for something new to watch, stop scrolling and start streaming. BYU TV has a ton of great options to binge together. From bold adventure to family drama and even a little fun, there's something for everyone. Binge entire series, experience all the feels, immerse in nonstop intrigue, and treat yourself to unexpected turns. Think you know BYU TV? We're just getting started. Yeah, yes. yeah, you guys want to try flying with me? Actually, we're doing guy stuff. You don't have to be so mean. We don't want you here. Well, then, I'll just leave. Wow. They skate. They're ruined. Did you hear that? One of our community's most important rules is that you can't contact humans. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Download the podcast, Google BYU Sports Nation podcast, and subscribe, rate, and review the show. It is time for our final prop pick results of the season. Yeah. Anticlimactic because... Where that Karim belt at? Already has the belt. Where is it? It was awarded to, to you. To my left. 
behind you, okay. next to the Greg Rebel picture. Go get it. Yep, Jeremy's gonna go get his belt. Hey, but I'll have my last lap because of this last game. Last lap? <laughs> Number one. How many combined total yards will Puka Nakua and Tyler Algier have? Yeah. I said 211. Jeremy had 184. Yep. It was a combination of 233. It was I mean, good. I take the first point. It yeah. was above mine. I thought I was aggressive there. Don't mind me. Just over here. Yeah, yeah. Cleaning up the belt. All right, number two. How many points will come off the foot of Jake Oldroyd? You have four extra points, no field goals. I said nine. You said seven. You win. <sighs> I wish they would have had a field goal because then it would be overtime, 31-31. Yeah. yeah. What will the margin of victory be? Three. Margin of victory was three, but <laughs> not for BYU. <laughs> Jeremy went 17 plus. Yes, and then I said Friday, that means it will be close. The curse of 17 plus lives on. You know what, Cougar Nation, it's my bad. <laughs> I'm the one who fumbled. I'm the one who didn't execute on fourth down. I'm the one who missed tackles. That's my bad. Final my standings bad. on the season, Jeremy five, Spencer three, thus you have the belt. On to double down. I was hoping to win by three plus, so it's disappointing. BYU basketball against Weber State. He's gonna keep holding this, good stuff. You can get up to three points if you get both picks right. Jerem, I'll go first Do because it. it was good for me. I said Alex Barcelo would go for 20 plus. I was sweating it at halftime. He had five points at halftime. He finished with 23. Mm. Okay. Yeah, get, yeah, he was great in the second half. Man. Get the point awesome. there. Number two, I said BYU is going to win by 10 plus. They crushed Weber State. Again, I felt aggressive there on the road. I was like, ah, double figure went on the road. Ugh. And they did. Stay. Come on, man. So I got both points in the bonus. Tijon Lucas will have six plus assists. Yep, he had six exactly. Nice. And no BYU player will score 20 or more. Alex Barcella ruined this for me. Thanks, Alex. Just dropping bombs from deep. Thanks, AB. So hoping you'd have 19. Uh, current standings, 22, 11. And yeah. then the guest has four. Somehow we yep. we uh, care about them. We, yeah. yeah. Well, we, we do care about our guests. I just don't care about our guest points. In our guest pickers? Instance. I don't care at all. Our question of the day, are you more focused on the BYU football bowl loss or have you zoomed out to focus on the entirety of the season? How are you coping is what we were saying. <laughs> Essentially, yes. Yeah, yeah. Our lead voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort, Charlie Kroos on Instagram says, entirety of the season. It was one of the best seasons ever in BYU history, even yeah. with the bowl loss. Yeah. This one game shouldn't define all the good that happened this season. Nope, it erases all of it. Just kidding. <laughs> Today's rise and shout outs presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. YouTube TV for Got figuring it, it together. But after the BYU game, I did sign up for Fubo TV for a second. Yep, so did we. <laughs> Tyler Algier, Samson Nakua. I mean, the guy could have gone in the locker yep. room and sulked. Yep. He Love went this. back out, Love gave this. his gloves to a young fan. The dad responded on Twitter said, This is incredible. It's made my son's night. Love Samson. Love Samson. Thanks for coming here. Seriously. Thank you. Absolutely. Our thanks to today's guests. Good time for Dennis? No. For Jerem, I'm Spencer. Shout out to all of the Nakuas, including Kai. Go Kooks.